What's up, YouTube? Homegrown Big coming at you again with a little bit more science. Um, this is a continuation of the conversation that will be inadvertently a <laughs> focus of this channel for the time being and probably for the foreseeable future as well. And that question is, can all humans thrive on a plant-based or vegan diet? Should all humans be on a plant-focused diet even? Um, can all humans be carnivores? Is there one diet that is the ultimate healthy diet for us as a human species? And it is my personal opinion, and I believe the science backs it up, that that is a resounding no. And the reason for that is genetics and regional adaptations. And it's only in this most recent couple of generations of modern eating, which has become a global diet, that we are seeing real problems. And I believe that that is in a large part besides inactivity and central um, temperature control in all of our um, domiciles, but that it is largely in part due to the fact that we are eating globally instead of regionally and genetically. Okay, that said, I think today's paper will really intrigue people especially if you are of, like myself, Northern European descent. Or maybe it will be interesting even if you are African descent or Asiatic descent, and it might confirm some ideas that you've already had. So without further ado, let's jump into this. All right, this research looked at genomes of 11 modern populations, three African, three Asian, and five European. Those were put up against chimpanzee and Neanderthal genomes. Chimpanzee sort of subbing in as an ancestral state closest relative to our most common recent ancestor. Uh, the researchers did some very well done, in my opinion, um, normalizing of the data and uh, pulling out any values that were anomalies. They replicated their tests to make sure that their reported values were consistent. Uh, and then they did some bootstrapping and they did some comparisons. And basically what they found um, really was in agreement with previous findings that um, their results showed greater similarity to Neanderthals in Europe versus Neanderthals in Asia or in Africa. Um, they saw that there was a stronger Neanderthal frequency in fat catabolism genes than whole genome-wide frequency. Now, what exactly does that mean? So when we have gene mingling, the genes that we see stay in that mingling are selected for. So this kind of means that there was a positive sweep and uh, this indicates an advantageous spread of these fat catabolizing alleles in the European populations and that it was an adaptative advantage. So if we think about that in Europe, what is available to eat in Europe? It's not that far off from the Arctic. It's meat heavy. It's fat heavy. And there are not a lot of year-round carbohydrates. So the better that you can handle fat, the better off that you're going to be in that region, okay? And the researchers also found significant evidence uh, for this fat catabolizing gene selection in Europeans, but not in Asians or African populations tested. So here's the thing. They found some sm small frequencies of these alleles in populations outside of Europe, but they didn't find the evidence for the positive selective sweep. And those are different types of genetic tests that I'm not going to get too much into, but that's a slight nuance in their findings. It showed that there was positive selection in Europeans and that, that the European descents in contemporary modern Europeans show more genes for processing fat. Um, and they showed an increased divergence between 
Europeans in our ancestral state of the chimpanzees. Now, I think that this is a really important finding, especially for those people who say things like, oh, we should eat like chimpanzees and bonobos because they're our nearest ancestors and it's our species-specific diet to be frugivores. Is that relevant for all global populations around the planet? I don't think so. So let's have a little discussion about this paper. I highly recommend that you read it. It's open access. There's a little bit more to it than I'm going to get into this video. Uh, you know, just it's a time thing. But I want to reflect upon my experiences and my thoughts about diet and nutrition and what these kind of genetic papers show that's lacking in other nutrition studies. So obviously, I have made the case that I hypothesize and I believe that a lot of the science that's coming up around nutrigenomics will support this, that one diet will not work for all human beings. And that is because of regional adaptations, genetic adaptations, and changes for how humans in certain areas adapted and survived. And if you have a bunch of genes that have been changed over in your ancestry and heritage that are for catabolizing fat, someone like myself who's of Northern European and Scandinavian descent, do you think that it's possible that a person such as myself might not fare that well on a high carbohydrate, low fat diet when I may have more genes for fat metabolizing pathways? Conversely, do you think it's reasonable that some of the nutrition reports that we pull from um, American studies that are heavy in African populations in those studies might have some results from people with a more ancestral genome that still has more original carbohydrate-oriented metabolic pathways over fat metabolic pathways. That's quite possible. Um, you know, is it reasonable to say that somebody who's from Southeast Asia might be in a similar boat, that there was not a genetic sweep for fat metabolism because they were in regions that were very carbohydrate-focused, and that it was more advantageous in those areas to be able to deal with carbohydrates over fats. These are things that are not often brought into the dietary conversation that need to be. And I make the case for it here that all of these things that I'm bringing along should be brought into these conversations. And that if people aren't talking about those and that they are just saying that there's one diet that's going to heal everything, that's going to be perfect for everybody, that is going to be the perfect healthy solution, is entirely wrong. And people who say these kind of things are drowned in their own confirmational bias and they're not looking at the full spectrum of data, especially nuclear genetic data and microbiome genetic data. And I especially think for anybody who's coming across as a health coach on the internet, um, if they're not taking into consideration these types of science and data, and they're trying to tell you that the diet that works for them is going to be the diet that works for you without really knowing much about your genetics run far away from them. Um, that is a train wreck. And I think that, you know, it kind of starts with, yeah, getting your 23andMe genetics tested, going further into that nutrition variable testing after you get those results, and watching the science that's starting to arise in the nutrigenomic. Um, it's going to be the future of nutrition, and we're all going to be able to get really specialized diets that actually do optimize our performance and health. And it's not 
vegan for everybody and it's not carnivore for everybody and it's not keto for everybody and it's not fruitarian for everybody. Those days of one diet, one size fits all, not only don't work as we can clearly observe by the number of adherents that fall out of every dietary category, as we clearly observe by highly variable nutrition studies that are giving different results. And I believe that that's because of genetic pools. Like if we want to see really good genetic studies, they're going to have to find people that have very similar genetic profiles. And that's going to take gen nutrition studies to the next level. It's going to be very different than what we have, you know, had available to us up until now. So I would just wrap this up with saying that I think if you're a person who has struggled with XYZ diet, whether it's plant-based or whether you went on keto and it screwed you up, um, take a step back. Uh, consider your genetics. Consider your regional adaptations. Consider your microbiome that was passed on to you through your heritage. Um, consider these things and maybe try experimenting with something that's more in alignment with where you come from. And if you don't know, maybe get tested. Um, I know myself, I'm doing this and having much, much better success. When I was on a high-carb, low-fat vegan diet, I watched my cholesterol go up every year until it was so high that <laughs> my doctor was going to suggest I go on statins. The irony of that's not lost on me. And now I'm eating animal products and more high fat and very moderated carbs. And my total cholesterol has just plummeted. It's over 40 points lower. I'm feeling much better. My performance is much better. Um, my story is not alone. I've talked with a lot of people who've had similar issues. Um, and I'm doing some collaborations with some of those people. And there are a lot of different stories. Uh, am I against veganism? No. I am against vegans claiming that veganism will work for everybody and that it's a healthy diet for everybody. It's not. Um, it is for some people, for sure. Uh, I've had friends who have tried veganism who could only get better when they ate nothing but red meat for like months on end after quitting veganism. I have other friends who got off of veganism and still do well on high starch with moderate um, fish and animal products. Uh, you know, the whole spectrum. So that's where I'm going to end this. Um, let me know your thoughts, your experiences, um, if you've had some genetic considerations to diet and how that's worked out for you. And then uh, hit thumbs up. And subscribe. I've got some more videos coming up that are going to be really fun and some collaborations and stuff like that. So 